Hello again, everyone. In the previous video, I showed you guys some very entry level examples of shells, basically shell variables where you want to store some information for later use. It was a very basic look, but I, I do feel like it was important to put it in its own video to make sure that you guys understand it. Because in this video, I'm going to show you guys the concept of scripts. It's going to again be a simple introduction because I have a series of videos already on my channel that shows you how to create Linux scripts or shell scripts, bash scripts, whatever you want to call them in greater detail. But I'm going to show you the basics here and then if you'd like you could go ahead and check out my other videos where I go in deeper on that subject. Now, how do you create a script? Well, I've mentioned this earlier in the series, but a script is essentially just a text file. There's really nothing different about a script versus a text file because it is a text file. But specifically, it's a text file that contains a series of commands that we want the system to run. But there's a very specific way that we have to create it in order for it to be essentially a script. So what I'm going to do is create an empty file. So I'll use touch. You don't have to do this, but it's just the way that I'm going to start it. And I'm going to call it my script.sh. .sh is common when you have a bash script, which is essentially what I'm going to show you how to create. But you don't have to have a .sh at the end. It'll still work just fine. The .sh just simply shows someone who's looking at this file that it is a shell script, much in the same way that if you have an audio file and it ends in .mp3, you know that it's an mp3 file if you care about the type of file that it is. So I'll press enter and if I do a long listing here, we can see that the file does exist. Now in a previous video when I was talking about permissions, then I did mention that the X stands for execute. So we are not going to execute this script. We will not be allowed to run this because there is no execute bit set. Just to prove it, if I do dot forward slash my script, you know, basically the file name, and the dot forward slash simply means in my current working directory, I want to run a file with this name, which we just created that. So the file does exist, and we get permission denied. And long story made short, I've gone over this before, we need that execute bit. So to give it that, what we'll do is chmod plus x against that file, just like that. And that was simple enough. The script file here did turn green because, you know, if you have colorized output, that is the default color for a script file. We can see that the execute bit is set. Now this file is empty. You know, we could try to run it if we'd like to. It, it does absolutely nothing because, well, there's nothing in the file right now. So let's go ahead and have some fun here. So what we're going to do is bring this up in the text editor. I'll press enter. And we're going to go ahead and create a script. And what I'm going to do is just simply type ls-l slash etsy slash ssh. I don't know why I keep using that directory as an example. And not everyone has this. Um, I think most installations probably will, but what directory we put here really doesn't matter. I'll save the file, control O and then enter and then control X. Now I can go ahead and run that script and it's simply just doing ls against that directory. That's completely useless. We could have just simply typed the ls command manually in the amount of time that it took us to create that script and run it. But that's not the point. We just wanted to see that basically when you have a script, it's just simply one or more commands and maybe even some branching and different things in a text file, but it's just a text file with instructions inside there for the system to run. So bringing that back up in our text editor, now again, here we have that very simple script. So what I'm gonna do is do this the right way because I did it the wrong way. I mean, it is valid because it did have a valid Linux command or shell command here. But when we want to write a script, there's a certain syntax that we should follow. And basically what we're gonna do is start our script with this. It's a hash bang, there's other names for it. But basically at the very top, we want to declare the interpreter that's going to be running our script, and in this case, bin bash. 
Now I'm going to save the file. I'm not going to quite uh, run this just yet. But what I want to do is echo a very important shell variable here just called shell bin bash. Well, that's the shell that we are using. When I opened up this terminal, it's running bash. It's running the born again shell or bash for short. And the binary for the bash interpreter here is in slash bin slash bash. We can simply prove that's correct by doing ls dash l or just simply ls. It doesn't matter. Against that, we see, of course, it does exist. So that interpreter we've actually been using all along here. So let's go ahead and get that back up on our screen. And right here, I am just declaring that the bash shell is what needs to be run for this. If I was, for example, writing a Python script, I would put the appropriate line here for Python. So that just lets the system know what the interpreter is that needs to be running this. And again, we have our ls-l command, but we've learned some things throughout the series. I'm just going to just add some random examples here. So what I'm going to do is just type my pkg short for my package. I'm going to set it equal to GIMP. And then I'm going to do sudo yum install GIMP. I'll keep the ls-l command right here. That's fine. Um, no worries. Then I'm going to do touch my file.txt. So I basically added a bunch of commands here. Now, um, what I should do here is actually reference the variable. That's what I meant to do. So I will do my pkg right here because I don't want to type GIMP again. I did create a variable for that. And then I'm going to save the file and then we can go ahead and run it. So let's do that right now. So it's asking for my password, probably because of that yum command I put in there. And it's asking me, you know, to install some dependencies. Well, you know what, this isn't the greatest thing right here. Um, let's go ahead and automate this a little bit better. So I'll just say no to abort. And, you know, there's an ls command in there against the SSH directory that I left in there. And then if I ls my current directory, we have myfile.txt, which I basically told the script to create. So I, I have a bunch of commands in there. That's essentially what I did. And back here in my text editor, there's a couple things I can change. Now, first of all, when I use CentOS, yum is muscle memory for me. So I actually should have typed DNF because that's actually what's being run. We've talked about this before. But I don't want to be prompted for confirmation. So I will use dash Y for that right there. And we know that ls works, so I will get rid of this. And then I will change this to a different name just so that this script is actually going to do different things than it did before. And again, I saved it, exiting out. Let's go ahead and run it. So again, that's my script name, dot forward slash, then the name of the script I wanna run. Now I could simply also type the full path if I'd like to. And that would work just fine, but I'm a little bit lazy. So I'm just going to simplify it down to that. I'll press enter. And it's installing GIMP. I didn't even confirm. Well, that's what the dash Y does. And that's why we like that in scripts. Because again, we may not have somebody in front of the machine to answer questions. When we automate things, we need to account for all of the questions that might come up and have some kind of process in place to answer those questions. And that's what the dash Y option did for us. And it's basically installing the GIMP package. And I don't know why I keep using that as an example. It's not just because GIMP is awesome, but it's easy to remember, I guess. And, you know, we have GIMP installed on this CentOS system now. I promise you it wasn't there before. So um, let's go back to the terminal and then I'll bring up the script. So as you can see, we can go ahead and start working on automating things on our Linux installation by creating a script. And this is a concept that deserves a video series of its own. I mean, I actually have one already. Go ahead and check that out. It was done a very, very, very long time ago when I didn't really have a great microphone. So I just want to give you that warning, but the content is still valid if you want to check that out. And I have other tutorials on my channel as well that also talk about scripting. So definitely check out those videos if you would like to learn more. But the takeaway here is, you know, as Linux administrators or users, there's always going to be a case where 
There's some things that we find ourselves doing on every installation, some tedious, time-consuming things, and scripting is something we want to learn how to use so we can automate these things and not have to worry about remembering how we did something. We can create a library of scripts and then we can go ahead and uh, run them when we need to. Now, before I close the video, I do, of course, want to show you one last thing. I can't believe I forgot this. So again, I'm going to use my ls-l option that I keep on using, same directory. And what I'm going to do is do echo, this is a test, and then another echo. All your base are belong to us, probably the greatest internet meme of all time. But what I'm going to do is put a hash symbol in front of this one on the bottom and then save the file. And basically the script is quite a bit of a downgrade because it's not really doing much, is it? But let's just go ahead and run it. And um, it, it echoed, this is a test, but it didn't echo the statement below that. So what's up with that? So if I go ahead and bring that back, you probably already figured this, that a hash symbol is a comment. It's not actually going to run this. So if I was to, for example, remove that and then run it, it's going to print it. So that's pretty simple and probably self-explanatory for sure. But I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned comments because when you have a script and it gets very complex, it's probably a good idea to put some helpful comments in there. So if somebody is looking at this script after you, they can get a feel for any important information about the script or how to run it, any information that's important that pertains to it. You can go ahead and document the script by creating comments. Now, this here is the exception though, isn't it? Because we have a hash symbol here on this very first line, but it does pay attention to that. And it goes beyond the scope of this video but trust me, it's paying attention to that. This is the exception, but after this, right here, it's not actually going to pay attention to comments. So if I was to comment out everything, for example, and then run it, of course it's going to do nothing because I commented everything out. But you get the idea. So this is a very important part of your career because if you've never written a script before, well, now you have. You are officially a Linux shell script programmer. I bet it feels awesome. And I know, again, this is a simple concept, especially for this late in the video series. I just want to make sure you guys have a handle on creating scripts. And again, there's all kinds of resources out there where you can go beyond this. You can write if statements, while loops, all kinds of cool things like that. And again, there's some additional videos on my channel already that you can check out. There's some good tutorials online if you Google, like if you wanna read a book on this or anything like that, there's all kinds of resources. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at aliases, something I've been looking forward to because I love aliases. It's an awesome thing and you're gonna love it. So I will see you in that video as soon as I have it uploaded, so stay tuned. <music>